find out what's making you sick and how to heal. Anthony William is the medical medium. Hello, I'm Anthony William. You're listening to the Medical Medium Radio Show, where each week I talk about the most advanced healing information out there, often decades ahead of what's out there now, all about chronic illness, so we all have a chance to heal and move forward. Today's show is about exercising, but before you you know, think about, hey, what does that mean? Have you exercised? What is, that, what is he talking about? I'm talking about with a chronic illness, recovery, recovering, maybe not even knowing how much you've come how far you've come with your recovery, because when we get sick, we get kind of stuck in this our own little bubble with it, and we get kind of scared or fearful that we don't have it in us to start doing things, and that happens to so many people who have struggled too long, and so this is about recovery. We're going to talk about different kinds of exercises, things we can do, body movement, building some muscles. We can talk even about how to recover from chronic illness in general with a lot of different information and stuff. So this is an important show. It, it, you know what? And if you're a triathlete or something like that and you just tuned on to the show and everything, you've had an injury and you want to know ways to, to actually do a recovery that's careful, that's, we, hey, look, this is for anybody and everybody. But yes, chronic illness is what we talk about mostly here versus injuries so much. But either way, everything's useful for moving forward. Um, and so that's what it's all about. So here we are. Let's just start. Let's go right into it right now. I want to tell you about so many stories, so many people I've run across over the years. And, and it's in the, it's in the, actually at this point now, I mean, it's not just hundreds of thousands. I mean, I started doing this so young and so many years ago, decades ago. I remember my office was jammed packed. We're going like over two and a half decades ago. And I saw just, I mean, so many people every day. And, and it was always like that seven days a week, every single week. And it even went back further from my very first clients at age 14 to even, even, even a little bit before that, not, of course, the readings as a child that I would do. But the bottom line is, with all that I've seen and the countless people that I've seen out there, including the people today, and that the books are reaching across the world and everything, it, what happens is it's so, so many stories are familiar. Maybe these stories seem familiar to you if you hear any of them. So you're 22 years old and you just graduated from college. You have aches and pains and you're developing fatigue. You're going to a doctor. They don't really know what's going on. They tell you maybe you're just, you've, you're just overstressed. Okay. Your family, your family's like, well, you know, you, you seem to be okay. Maybe it's, maybe you're just, you know, having a little bit of, of downtime, but the aches and pains continue. And you're, and you're starting to feel other strange symptoms. You're getting a little bit of anxiety, getting a little bit of a panic attack periodically. You go back to the doctor. Now you're at a different doctor. You feel like you can't breathe good for some reason. Now you're at a pulmonologist. And, and, and now you're getting funny symptoms. Maybe you're getting not just aches and pains, but you're getting a little tingles in different parts of your body. And you're 22 years old. And you're getting tingles all on your body. Now you're at a neurologist's office. Now you're, you're hitting all the conventional doctors. You're getting blood work. You're getting tests. Totally confused. You're watching your friends kind of move on with their life. They're going out. They're drinking. They're doing what they want. They're talking about their career moves and everything. And you're focused on doctor visits constantly. And then after you've exhausted that, you're 23 years old, turning 23 years old after a year of that, no real answers. You're at the functional medicine doctor. And now you're doing elimination diets. You can't have this, but you can have this. You can't eat this, but you can have this. You can't eat gluten. You can't do this. You can't have cheese. You're 23 years old, and you're like, I can't have cheese. I can't have gluten. Oh, you can't have pistachios, but you can have an almond. And you can't have cilantro, but you can have a grape. Oh, no, you can't have a potato, but you can have, a, you can have um, something else. Oh, you can't have citrus, but you can have meat. You can have you know, grass-fed beef, or you can have grass-fed butter, but you can't have this kind of fish, but you can have this kind of fish. And now you're just basically doing all the elimination diets, and you bounce back. Is it my blood type? Is it this? Do I do an elimination diet? Do you do all this testing? Do I have a methylation problem? Do I not? Oh, I have bacteria in my gut. Is it SIBO? Now you're doing all these other protocols. Then you're doing an antibiotic. Then you're back to the conventional doctor. This is just a fraction 
of what people go through. You're 23 years old, you're a young woman, and now you have food fear of the worst kind ever. You've been through three elimination diets, your aches and pains are worse, you almost started getting better and then started getting worse again. You're buying $1,000 of supplements a month, easy. Maybe even $2,000 in supplements a month. And your family has to pay for it, or you have to try to work or get a job while you're sick. And this, this is just a fraction of the thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of stories. You can't jog anymore. You can't do yoga anymore. You can't exercise anymore. Now you're diagnosed with possible rheumatoid arthritis, but then not anymore. Then you're diagnosed with fibromyalgia. And all of a sudden, a year later, you're 24. Another year later, you're 24. You just got diagnosed with a thyroid condition. So now you're at a function, another functional medicine doctor, and you got diagnosed with a thyroid condition now. And now you're on thyroid medications, and your heart's racing from the thyroid medications. So every time you take your thyroid medication, you're up all night with an arrhythmia, and you're just like, oh my God, now you're at the emergency room over and over again with panic on top of it and panic attacks. I have heard that happen so many times. That is just one variation. You have to understand what I'm saying here. It's one variation, one, one variation. Okay. Okay. So you're, tw- you're 29 years old and you're a young, you're a young woman at 29 years old. You have your first baby and then you start developing fatigue afterwards. You're going to your doctor. Your doctor doesn't know what's wrong. You run a whole bunch of tests, a whole gamma of tests. Then you go to a natural doctor because somebody told you to go to a natural doctor. You had a, you're at another functional medicine doctor or alternative doctor and you're getting blood work and you know, all kinds of blood work, 20 vials of blood being removed out of you. You're an exhausted mom. You got a new baby. And you just, you just had 20 vials of blood pulled out with all these tests being running. Oh, you're nutritionally deficient here. Oh, you're, you're low on this. Oh, you're, meanwhile, it has nothing to do with anything. Oh, wait a minute. It shows you don't have enough proteins. Oh, it shows you don't have enough this and that. You're 29 years old. You're turning 30 years old. You got a baby. You don't feel good. You could barely function. And then you get diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, or you get diagnosed with SIBO once again, or you get diagnosed with Lyme disease. Same thing with the 22-year-old. You could be another 22-year-old or 24-year-old or 25-year-old. And I'm just starting with the, I'm starting with people that are in the younger generations. I'm not even going into the older generations or, or years after that. And next thing you know, you're diagnosed with Lyme disease. Oh, okay, well, you have Lyme disease now. Here's what you got to do. And you're hopping on the internet, and you're, now you're looking through all the Lyme madness out there, all the misinformation, all the confusion, and then the confusion that the functional medicine doctors have about not even understanding how Lyme disease really, really, really works because they're still going on old information that never worked to begin with going all the way back. They're starting to implement newer information with Lyme disease, thank God. But, it, but, but it's, only, it's still just fractions compared to what we've done here as far as getting people better with Lyme disease over the years, going all the way back 20, 30 years ago. And the thing is, is this, and this is what people have to go through every day. And now it's back to food elimination diets. And now you're a mommy, you have a child, you have a baby, you're exhausted, you have fatigue, aches and pains, you're starting to get ringing in your ears. And no one has answers. So functional medicine doctor or conventional doctor, they don't know why you're ringing in the ears because that's Epstein-Barr. It's all the radio shows. If you're new to my radio shows information, pick up a book and learn about what's really causing illness. I, I, I ask you that. Pick up a book. I'm asking you that. Please pick up a book. You can't afford one? Go to the library. Take out thyroid healing. Take out medical medium secrets. Take out life-changing foods if you want. Take out liver rescue. And, but which, so you can learn about what happens. So here you are. You're 30 years old. You got a baby. You got ringing in the ears now. You got dizziness. Nobody knows what it is. And it just we could all call it Lyme disease. You can go that route, and then all of a sudden you're on antibiotics, getting sicker and sicker and sicker. I've seen this over and over and over again. I've seen lives ruined, lives trashed, just because no one knows is as simple as the labyrinth of the inner ear causing tinnitus. It's, it's Epstein-Barr. Hashimoto's is Epstein-Barr, and this is what you need to do to get rid of it. Or this is what's happening. You know how many 22-year-olds that came out of college or 20-year-olds that are in college that never went back to college because... They were sick, couldn't get out of bed, couldn't function, and were not even diagnosed properly. And when they were diagnosed even partially properly, they weren't given even the right protocols to get a chance in life, and they had to stay sick all through their 20s before they either found the right information or never did. It's over and over and over again. It's unbelievable the merry-go-round that I've always talked about. I've always talked about 
that I had on my website many years ago, the merry-go-round, yeah, or musical chairs. You know, and that's what it's like. And the thing is, when all that's happening, next thing you know it, you can't exercise anymore. And these are just a couple of variations. I'm not even going into so many different variations of depression, of anxiety, of not just body aches and pains, but like like back problems and like and 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 uh, plantar fasciitis and everything else, like all kinds of different things. Morin's neuroma and feet problems and hand problems and and nerve problems and and hair falling out and and all these different things that happen. And that's just some of the things that people go through. And, and insomnia and not sleeping. I can't tell you how many people, they, they get sick, they can't sleep, they're told they have Lyme, they're told they have something else. They don't, you know, they've been to 100 doctors, they've done every single diet, all the different elimination diets, every single else, and they still don't even know what's going on. And it's sad and it's heartbreaking that they don't even have the right information and they get sick and they get sick and they get sick. And when you're getting sicker, you start kind of going into like you start, most people start to get reclusive. They start to actually pull in. They start to actually say, oh my God, I just, I, my friends don't want to hear it anymore. I, you know, their friends change. I've seen this over and over again. Family even kind of shifts gears. I've seen this happen. It is heartbreaking. And then you're not able to exercise anymore. You're not able to run track like you did in school. You're not able to do the things you you wanted to do. You can't play soccer. You can't get on your bicycle. You can't run five miles, six miles every morning. You can't do these things as you're getting sicker and sicker, it's all about doctor's appointments and food fear all the time. What do I eat? How do I eat? This doctor says I can't have this, but I can have this. This functional doctor says I can have this, I can't have this. And it's I, I can have bone broth, but I can't have this. I, you know, it's endless, endless, endless. You can't touch a potato, but you can eat all the grass-fed butter you want. You can't do this, but you can do it's unbelievable. And you just get sicker and sicker. And when you do that, you lose muscle. You lose muscle. And then, and then when you're dealing with neurological fatigue, which no one really even understands till this day, unless you, you, you pick up a thyroid healing book or something, and you get neurological fatigue, where it's a fatigue where your body can't work and your arms are numb and your legs are numb and you feel heavy, heavy like a lead. I can't tell you how many 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, 20-year-olds, even 15-year-olds, 25-year-olds, 30-year-olds, and going on, of course, 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds, but it's, it's heartbreaking when it happens in the earlier days before life has been established in a way where the younger crowd, I talk about this in the books, where the younger crowd, they're, they're just watching all the other reindeer play and they can't play. And they're just like, what is this? And then they realize, and, I, and this is the heartbreaking part. I've heard it a million times. I swear to God, I swear to God, I've heard this a million times. And I always hear this. It's, I thought science and research knew everything. They all say that when they come out of school. I thought science and research knew everything. My friend is a chemist. My friend is a, a lab technician. You know, what, meaning wanting to be a lab tech, technician coming out of school. My friend's in medical school. My other friend is into, into like total, into physics. I was into this and And not even that, just you're going through school, whatever it is you're going through. And I heard it over and over again. And even if you didn't go through school, I thought, and I hear it from, from women in their twenties, women in their teens, women in their, their late twenties, their thirties. And they say, I thought science knew everything. I thought we just went to the doctor and we took an antibiotic when we weren't feeling good. And we had maybe a yeast infection. And I thought that that everybody knew everything, and I thought that the doctors knew everything, and I thought that the doctors had the answers because we're in we're in two thousand and whatever right now, and we're in the new we're in the we're in the you know science is crazy. Look what's happening. Look at look at uh, the tech world. It's out of control. And you mean to tell me no one even knows truly what's causing thyroid problems except some bogus studies that came out after Anthony William put the true information out first and then bogus studies try to actually make it look like Epstein Barr has anything to do with anything you mean that was it it was just the information that Anthony has 
all these years and then a few bogus studies about it a little bit later that don't even line up to the, what, what is really happening? Like, I thought science and research, I hear it all, I've heard it for years, I hear it now more than ever. I thought, and they're in shock, they're in shock. They're trained in school and college. They're trained that it's all sewed up out there. That, man, science and research has it going on as far as you want to take it. It's there. Everything. It's all opportunities. And the minute you get sick, you find out that, that science and research knows nothing about chronic illness. Dear God, dear Lord, it's unbelievable. And it's, it's, it's breathtakingly disastrous. I've seen people's jaws drop as they get sicker. And they're like, what do you mean that I'm not getting better and, and I have this and that and they're at these functional medicine doctors and they're at these other doctors and the other people and they're traveling around the country or they're just in their state and they're at their conventional doctor, an alternative doctor. And yeah, it looks, it looks like there's so many blood labs and oh my God, you're nutritionally deficient here and your IgG and everything else and you got all this and you got all that. And wait, take this, don't take this and eat this, eat that. And you just get sicker and sicker and sicker because no one really knows what's happening unless you get the source that I've been able to offer the source about how neurological fatigue works. Why, why you have tremors, shakes, uh, aches and pains, tingles, numbness, balance issues, ring in the ear. Why you have all the floaters in the eyes, you know, creepy crawlies on the skin. It's jerks when you're falling asleep. Oh my God. And even way more than that, different varieties of fatigue, crashes, all kinds of things you just can go on and on. Headaches, migraines, anxiety, different bouts of anxiety, depression, all of it. And when you don't know, when you realize, and I've seen 20 year olds, 22 year olds, 25 year olds come out of amazing schools, elite schools, elite, I'm talking elite schools, top schools. And they come out and they're sick. And they realize science and research knows absolutely nothing. It took them about 10 doctors to figure it out. It took them about maybe a few months, some of them, some people, it takes a year. Same thing with anybody that are 30, 35 years old. I've had people that are 35 years old and they've been, they've been, everything's been fine. Everything's been fine. They wake up one morning and they, they feel like they're having like a, an anxiety attack or a stroke. And they're at three doctors now. And now they're at their neurologist. And now they're diagnosed with God knows what. And this and that. And methylation and, and everything else under the sun. And they're all of a sudden having to take foods out. And they're confused. And they're like, wait a minute. And I've had people tell me all the time, you mean science and research knows nothing about anything when it comes down to chronic illness? And it, and it, and it's, it hits like a brick wall to everyone, everyone. And the ones you'll see on the internet, the, and it's usually the guys, and it's women too, but usually the guys on the internet that are, that are trolling on the internet, they've never had a health problem and they're sitting there on all these chronic illness sites and they're saying, oh, don't do that, don't do this, this is wrong, this is right. Or, or even, if it's, even if it's women too, you'll find that they've never really been sick and they're out there and they're just on making noise out there and they don't know what it's like to be sick and get chronically ill. And to have everything just fall through and the freaking floor fall through underneath you and you just can't exercise anymore and you got to plan your day around your sickness and you have to plan your day around your damn headaches and you have to play, you, you have to plan your headaches, meaning around your life. You have to plan your aches and pains around your life. You have to plan your life around them. It's, it's like, it's like unbelievable. Which is it going to be? Is the fatigue going to hit me too hard today? Am I going to have even a good day enough to get something done? Can I run errands? If you're a young mommy, can I even run errands? Who do I have to rely on? I need help. Same thing if you're just a young woman that just came out of college or whatever it is. And it's like, I can't go out. There's, I can't go out to the bars with my friends. I can't go do anything. I forget, forget dating right now. I can't do anything. I've seen this over and over again. Same thing with same thing with women that 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 have three or four children, and they're 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 forty years old, and their children are all uh, eight, nine, ten years old, eleven years old, 
and and mommy can't get out of bed anymore and mommy's running to doctor and doctor and doctor and it's and it's it's too much to to run the kids to soccer it's too much to actually work a job and it's just it's endless and then this is just a few examples i can't even i mean i would need 50 shows to go over across the the gamut of chronic illness from all the different diagnoses from dysautotomia to everything to like all the different different things that everybody is is getting diagnosed with every day it's not just ms it's not just multiple sclerosis it's just, i mean it's just it's endless and and there's that many and so what happens when when we get sick and we start losing our ability to move we're spending all of our energy trying to function. It's not about exercising anymore. It's not about taking walks anymore. It's not about running anymore. It's not about playing frisbee with your friends at the park anymore. It's not about doing things like this. It's not about riding your bike. It's not about swimming. It's not about exercising, working at a gym. It's not about waking up 530 in the morning, running to the gym, Going on the treadmill for 45 minutes, going on the stair stepper for a half an hour, hopping on the spinning bike for another half an hour with the spinning class, and then next day going to, to, to hot yoga for, for two hours. It's not about that anymore. You get, you get sick. Those, you lose all of that, and it all starts to go. And you don't think anybody's losing that? Millions, and mostly women, millions, and almost all women and, there, and that's what's happening right now. And when that happens, first thing you realize is, okay, first thing you realize is science and research failed. Failed miserably. And it's not your doctor's fault. At first, you think it's your doctor's fault. And then you find it's probably not your doctor's fault because all doctors are good. I mean, they're all good. They're in it to try to get people better. They're in it to do what they have to do. I mean, they're, I mean, without them, what would we do? Because there is life-saving technology and there is life-saving medicine. I'm talking about chronic illness. There's a big difference. Don't get me wrong. And you'll learn that science and research has failed, failed so horrifically on womankind, and no one cares and no one talks about it. It's not out there as a topic. It's not out there being something being done. In legislation, it's not out there being politically worked on. It's not out there. There's nothing out there. It's just you get sick. That's your problem. It's your genes. It's your body attacking itself. And that's another thing. And then here you are and you're in your 20s or whether you're in your 30s or even your 40s or 50s, whatever it is. And you're in your 20s and you just got told your body's attacking itself. And, and, and you're getting thrown theoretical, bogus, grandfathered law science have been paid for and bought, completely negligent, and you're getting throw that, thro- thrown that information that your body's attacking itself, that your body's attacking all the cells in your body, that your immune system's destroying your tissue and your organs. And then you get told that. You get told that. Because science and research doesn't know about the different viruses that you might have picked up in college. doesn't know about the different viruses you might have picked up as a child that have even been transpired from family. You don't even know about the viruses you pick up because you're, you're, just, you're just, you know, you're sipping off of somebody's glass in somebody's restaurant. And, you know, and, 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 and same bacteria, whatever. And science research doesn't even care about all that. Doesn't care about the HHV six and all the and all the uh, Epstein bars. I mean, they care about it a little bit more now because of what we've done. I mean, I've dedicated my life's work of getting it out there, you guys, and it's finally getting out there. But it's skewed. It's skewed because the source is here, and what they do is they take the infra- they see the wave of the trend that was created, the medical medium trend that was created. They see it, they take pieces of it, and they implement all their other garbage so people still don't get better. I, I don't want to say it's, it's, it's hopeless to think, you know, I don't want to be hopeless when I wake up in the morning and think that, do you know what? It's never going to get as good as I think it's, that I thought it would get out there. I still have to have faith. But as long as we have the information here and you find your way, we can help you. And what happens is when you lose your physical health like this and your mental health because of it. You lose the ability to exercise. You lose your ability to keep muscle on. And 
And that's a difficult thing. And when someone doesn't have the right source to heal, they don't know about the celery juice, right? You guys, the celery juice? And they don't know about the celery juice. And they don't know about the heavy metal detox smoothie, the right one to actually take metals out of the body so it's not feeding viruses that keep people sick every day. And they don't know about the, the heavy metal toxic heavy metal smoothie to remove metals. And they don't know about the other things about what to do, about how to keep the fats lower no matter what kind of diet they're on because the fat trend is what's keeping everybody sicker and sicker. And, and they don't know about these things. Then yes, they stay sick. Yes, they stay sick. And yes, they lose muscle and they get lost. I've seen people lost for decades before they found the truth. And then when you find the truth and you're doing the celery juice for six months every single day and you notice your digestion getting stronger, which means bacteria in your gut is dying and viruses are dying, and then you notice that things are getting better, and then you're doing the toxic heavy metal smoothie, okay, and you're doing that, you're getting that those toxic heavy metals out of your system, out of your body, and you're, you're learning how to eat better, the right foods. And you're starting to improve, but you're, you're in this place where you don't know how, how strong you're really getting. Because what happens we get, when we're sick too long and we get into chronic illness and we fall back into it and we really are in this place, we don't, we don't actually know how much we can do. And, and that if we just start doing a little bit, how it starts to build momentum, and, and, and that's what happens a lot. It happens to a lot of people. And there's two things that can happen when you start healing. When you start healing doing the medical medium information and you start healing. There's a, there's a couple of things that happen. One is you start getting better. So you push yourself too far. You start doing things around the house. You start running around. You start doing this. You might even start exercising too fast. And then you feel like you set yourself back a little bit because you didn't have enough muscle. And then the nerves hurt and everything hurt. And you just you, you push yourself too far too fast. It's a gradual thing that has to happen for recovery once you start getting better. There's, there's a crew of people that jump right into the fire pit. Right into the fire pit once they start feeling a little better. And they just, they just, they just they like explode where they want to do so many things at once. They haven't done anything in a long time. And so you got to be careful about that, that you don't overdo it. And then there's a crowd, a huge crowd of people that they're kind of coiled up. They're scared. They're getting better, but they're, they're afraid because they, when they were sick, they got hurt every time they tried to do something. They didn't feel good every try, time they tried to do something. They were, they were, you know, kicked back when they when they were because when they were sick and chronically ill, they would go and try to do an exercise they used to do. They would try to go take this long, long walk, and then they'd be trashed for three, four days, three, four days, where they couldn't even they couldn't even move out of bed. And it was it, that crowd is it that, that happens. There's so many people. I've seen it where they're sick for two years. They finally get the real information, the truth about how to heal. They finally get it, and they're recovering. And they get a sense that they're recovering. They get a, a, a sense that oh my god, I'm actually getting better. But then they're afraid. They're afraid to start doing something. They're afraid to start moving a little and then resting and then learning how to move a little and then rest and then move a little. And it's important to understand that you can do that. There's so many people that need to do that. I I run into people over the years. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, you're actually talking now a lot more. You're thinking clearly. Your brain fog is gone. Your brain fog is gone. You got less aches and pains. You mean you're not as tired? You could actually stay up at night? Meaning you can stay up or you're sleeping better at night and you're functioning better at day and you can feel, you feel less viral, you're functioning. But wait a minute, have you been taking a walk? Oh no, you're afraid to take a walk? Wait, wait, what? You're afraid to start taking a walk? Why? 
And they say, well, because when I was at the functional medicine doctor's office three years ago and, and I was really sick and I was going around, I, would, I, would, I went to physical therapist and I, I, I would actually try to exercise and next thing you know, it would trash me and I was so wounded by it and emotionally and physically and I have to be, I would basically would be bedridden for three more days and then I, it made me afraid so I would just have to use all my energy to have to function, all my energy to just have to get through a day, all my energy just to have to get through my daily tasks pay whatever bills and and try to work or try to work or or just function or just do anything or take care of my children I couldn't do anything because if I did anything more I pay the price and I already was paying the price because I was so sick so when I started getting better which is now they would say I just don't know what I can do. I don't know what I can push. I don't know how far I can go. What what can I do? What am I allowed to do cuz I'm scared? I mean, like, you're allowed to start walking. Start taking some gentle walks. Start doing that. Grab some two-pound weights. Two-pound weights. You don't even have to walk with them. Sit in a chair with a two-pound weight. Just sit in your chair at your your office desk with a two-pound weight. And kind of just do some gentle curls with a two-pound weight. Do five of them. Yeah, sounds lame. Does it sound lame? Well, being bedridden and sick for a decade, like I've seen some people for two decades, that sounds just absolutely god awful. And I've seen people go through it. I've had to get a lot of people better over the years that had to go through that. You know what I mean? I'll tell you right now if anybody listens to this show that's never been sick or that sick, keep some compassion in your heart and know that a two pound weight, a one pound weight in somebody's hand, who's been through absolute, absolute hell. 50 doctors, five years of hell, being in bed half the time, losing friends, and maybe they weren't even the best friends anyway. I've always said that to people. I swear to God, the way things work. And you know, in all of that, a two pound weight, a one pound weight is, is, is like a godsend and be actually doing curls. 10, 10 at a time at your desk, twice a day. And then what happens is you might feel a little sore, you might feel a little whipped from it, but maybe not like you were set back because you're getting better, and then you do it again. Next thing you know, you're taking a walk. Next thing you know, you're walking with one pound weights. Next thing you know it, you're walking without weights. Who cares? You could just take walks. Next thing you know it, you go swim somewhere. And you know, next thing you know, you're riding a bicycle. And it takes, you know, it's one, once, but next thing you know, you're doing some gentle yoga again. You actually remember some of your yoga moves, your yoga moves. Sure, if you were never sick before, like that, that doesn't make sense to the person who's never sick before. I see that out there all the time. I see it out there all day long on social media. People that haven't been sick, they can go to yoga class for an hour and a half, leave yoga, or do 20 errands, run around, drink wine at night, throw a dinner party, have all their friends over. Blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Like, and they, they're like, oh, well, my friend's been sick. I don't really understand why they just haven't gone to a doctor. I don't know why my friend hasn't gone to a doctor. I think they went to a bunch of doctors. They're sick. I don't know what's wrong with them. I think they got like Lyme disease or something. When you, you know what it is when you haven't been sick, you just don't get it. And a lot of people, you know, some people do. Some people do. But I'm saying that I'm telling you right now, you're taking a walk. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. You're taking a walk. You're taking a bike ride. You're doing, you're doing your first set of yoga again, or you're doing it for 10 minutes, 10 minutes. You're doing, and you're doing yoga for 10 minutes. You're doing Tai Chi for five minutes a day. You're doing two Tai Chi moves Five minutes a day, and then you build up and you build up. It's amazing. It's miraculous what can happen, okay? It really is. And a lot of people, they're afraid. They're stuck. They're stuck. They've been sick too long. They used to try. They gave up trying because they got sicker and hurt from it. They've been through too many, too many doctors, through too many experiences. I'm talking from younger, younger people all the way to older people. And, and then once they get the right information, 
Once they're taking the toxic heavy metals out of their brain and liver and nervous system, and they're taking the metals out, so viruses can't feed off of them, creating fibromyalgia of all different levels, creating you know everything, creating multiple sclerosis of all different levels, creating fr- chronic fatigue syndrome of all different levels and different varieties, creating Hashimoto's, creating aches and pains, constipation, bloating, digestive cramping, Crohn's colitis, headaches, migraines, all the different symptoms, dizziness, vertigo nonstop. When you start getting rid of the viral load and you start getting rid of the the toxic heavy metal load that I talk about, that I outline in the books in, in medical medium books, thyroid healing, it, the, the, when you start getting rid of that, that I talk about in liver rescue, you, you're in a place where you can start moving forward, but you may be whiplashed from your past experience. PTSD from five years ago when you pushed yourself too hard because you were just trying to exercise and you crashed and crashed and burned and burned because no one knew what to do about your viral load. Nobody knew what to do about the viruses. Nobody knew what to do about getting the Epstein bar out. Nobody knew about the celery juice. And nobody knew you had to do the celery juice and how you had to do the celery juice to bring yourself back to kill off the membrane on the virus sheath, to kill off the virus membrane, to kill off that, the bacteria membrane, to kill off these bugs, pathogens, to start moving forward so the aches and pains are less, to start moving forward so that everything starts to lessen, so the ringing in the ears start to lessen, so the dizziness starts to lessen, so the fatigue, so the crashes start to lessen, the everything starts to lessen, the migraines, the headaches, to the tremors, to the, to the shakes, tremor, tremors, the tingles, the numbers, the cre- creepy crawlers, the pinches on the body and everything else. All of the aches and pains inside the body that hurt. All of it. And then when you get to that point, it's time to move again. It's time to move. Not just the functioning that you do on a daily basis to survive, but it's time to move. It's time to start. Okay, I'm going to start taking a walk. I'm going to walk 10 minutes a day. I'm going to rebound. Let me hop on the rebounder. Let me order a rebounder. Let me get a rebounder. Anthony Williams says, you know, the medical medium says the rebounding is amazing. He says it is. And it is. And you're sitting on the rebound. You stand on the rebounder. And you go up and down it gently for five minutes a day. And it's going to build up little muscles that haven't been built in a year. Six months for people. Hasn't been built in two years for people. Some people hasn't been built in five years. Ten years. And when they finally get the answers to heal like they do. And they're doing the celery juice. And they're doing the heavy metal detox smoothie. And they're doing the right protocols and they're doing information that's in the books and they're learning their body's not attacking and destroying itself and they're learning how to heal and how to move forward and how to recover and then they can get on the rebounder. They can get on the rebounder with a little bit more confidence, a little bit more faith and they can jump up and down five minutes a day. Next thing you know, it's 10 minutes a day and all of a sudden now your confidence comes back and all of a sudden now you're in shock Whoa, I just rebounded for five minutes a day. And you might be listening saying, hey, I rebound for a half an hour a day. I'm already the good. Rebound for a half an hour a day. Rebound for 40 minutes per day for you guys. And if you guys are just athletes, because I know a lot of athletes follow uh, the medical medium information. If you're, if you're an athlete, you got injuries. Yeah, take this to the next level, of course. Of course, of course, take this to the next level. Absolutely. With your recoveries. But the chronic illness and the chronic illness community and the people and um, what happens is, you know, you get that 10 minutes of rebounding and your life is changing. You get the 15 minutes of rebounding and your life's changing. And then you get a little bit of yoga in another day. Like I just did 10 minutes of yoga, like just gentle, just gentle moves, gentle positions. And I just did 10 minutes of rebounding the day before. And I just took a walk. Yeah, I'm feeling a little sore, but wait a minute. I, I'm, I'm recovering versus going backwards, backwards, backwards. And 
Now I'm at the store and I'm picking up my produce. I'm getting my produce and I feel like I got a little more strength. The visit to the store is not wiping the crap out of me. It's not wiping me out to the point where I can't function. It's not wiping me out where I'm on the floor when I get home. You know, you get, when you got the chronic illness and you're trying to survive and you go to the store and you come back from the store and you're, you're in the, you're at home and you're on the floor. And let me tell you something, people with chronic illness can't even go to the store and pick out produce and even drive and get home. There's a whole bunch of those people too. But there's a lot of people where that's the store is all they can do. Next thing you know, if you're rebounding for 10 minutes, you can go to the store and then you can go run an errand, you can go to the office store, you can go do this, you can go pick up that. Next thing you know, you come back home, yeah, you got to lay down and rest because you're, you're, you're tired and worn out from it all. But then... You bounce back again and you're like, oh my God, how's this possible? Because you've been taking your heavy metals out. You've been doing your celery juice, been lowering your fats. So I'm going to talk about it in a minute. And you're doing your rebounding and you're doing your swimming. If you ever get a chance to swim somewhere and you're doing your walking, you're doing your fast walking, you're doing a little weight sitting down at a chair. I'm going to tell you something right now. I've had people with chronic illness just take two pound weights and they're sitting in their easy chair, they're sitting in their easy chair, watching TV, and they get their two-pound weight, and they're just holding it. They're not even really doing curls. They're holding it up. They drop it down. They hold it up. They drop it down. They put it in the other hand. They hold it up. They drop it down. They hold it up. They drop it down. They put it in the other hand. They open it up. They drop it down right on the easy chair. They hold it up, put it, drop it down. And I swear to God, I've seen it give somebody confidence and give them inspiration where they were up out of that easy chair, doing the right protocols, of course, eating better, and then they got the five-pound weight, and they're standing up doing five-pound weight curls. And next thing you know it, they got a machine coming to the house, and they're doing resistance, resistance training on a machine. And then next thing you know it, they're taking walks. I mean, I've seen it all, but you have to know that... We get, we get scared when we've been sick too long or we've been sick for, for a, look, a month is too long for so many people. A month is forever for somebody who's younger. If you're 40 years old, a month isn't forever. If you're 50 years old, a month isn't forever. Okay? 60, year old, 60 years old, a month isn't forever. 70 years old, a month isn't forever. No. 20 year old, a month is an eternity. An eternity. An 18-year-old, a month is not, it's, it's just, it's not even, you can't, it's unthinkable. And you're 25, a month is still an eternity. You know? When you're 35, a month isn't so long. It's, it's annoying, but it isn't so long. It's, it's amazing how perspective time works when you're sick too. You got to remember that because that's what breaks down the spirit the younger people, their spirit shatters fast with chronic illness. The older people, they're like, okay, I've ebbed and flowed in my life. I've had, I've had you know, sour lemons once in a while. I could, I could push through this one when you're older. I could push this one now. And you, you give it more of a go. You fight for it more. When you're in your 40s and 50s, you fight for it more. You're like, okay, okay, I've seen friends that got sick before. I've seen, you know, I've broke my leg 10 years ago uh, skiing. I, I could handle this. I could move forward with this. You go to 20 doctors, your spirit still breaks down. You still get sick. Your spirit breaks down, and you're like, oh, my God, what am I doing? But when you're younger, it's, like, tragic. The one month of, like, or six months of UTIs when the doctor doesn't even know that it's not yeast, it's really streptococcus that was picked up somewhere, and no one's giving the right protocol to get that UTI better. Or the sinus infections, it's all strep. And no one's giving the right protocol. And they're just going, going to ears, nose, and throat doctors, left and right, left and right. And still got fatigue and everything else. And nobody knows what's going on. And you got tonsil stones. And you got sore throats periodically all the time. You always got these chronic sore throats. And then you get even shingles breakouts on your body or weird little pustules on your body. I mean, I've seen it all out there. But with all of this... When you know what you're doing and you know what you need to do and you learn how to move forward, it's time to move forward. And then when you finally get that information, you get that truth, now it's time to start exercising. That's what you do. It's time to start exercising. 
because people, they just get scared. They don't want to move. They get bottled up. They get, they get frightened and you just can't really, the confidence isn't there. But once you realize you're healing and you're doing the celery juice for six months and all of a sudden now you're taking a walk and you're taking a longer walk, taking a longer walk and you're less achy and your, your muscles are building up and your muscles are building up. It's like a miracle. And it paid off the payoff, the payoff. But one thing that's really important, and you know what happens too, is you start getting oxygen to your tissue. The minute you start lifting up that weight, that gentle weight, that little two pound weight, or you're on the rebounder, you're on the rebounder jumping up and down for 10 minutes, five minutes, you're getting oxygen. You're getting oxygen. It's getting into the cells. Then all the good you've been doing on the protocol, on information that you've been getting from medical medium, information from the books, information from the leaders in the medical medium community that actually know the information and they actually lived it. They're doing it and they've been healed or they're healing. And you get, you learn and you don't get lost in all of the other noise out there. The amazing amounts of noise. And if you're someone new listening to the show and you think it isn't noise out there, that's good. But if you ever get sick, if you ever get sick and it ain't moving forward or you're just, you get better and then you fall back again, you don't know why and you're falling back, learn the truth about what's going on behind your sickness. Learn how to do the celery juice. Learn how to do things. Learn how to do them. Because you don't want to get to that position where you're just... You're losing muscle. You can't function. You can't do simple tasks. You can't work and you can't exercise anymore. And then you get afraid and scared to even do it, do it again when you start healing. And when you start healing, you start doing the rebounding and you start doing this and you start doing a few yoga moves and you start doing some gentle exercises and taking walks and going to the park and whatever it is that you got to do and going in nature, going in nature. Even if it's on a trail for us for three minutes where you're not walking deep into the trail, but you're on you're in a park or you're in some place that's a safe setting, a safe setting and you're somewhere, or you're looking at the sky wherever you are. And whatever it is that you can do, or if you have a yard, or if you have a little garden and that's what you're doing, you'd start doing a little bit of gardening again. A lot of people get sick, they never want to garden again, they don't go near the garden. And then and then when they start getting better, they're afraid to go near the garden. But once you say, hey, look, you can start doing it now, you've really come a long way. And their confidence comes back and they go out and they start pulling a few weeds. And they do it for 10 minutes and they're sore for the next day, but they're not trashed. And they end up building back up. It's amazing what happens. But one of the secrets, one of... The powerful points of getting recovery, of getting recovery is keeping the fats lower. The problem is right now in, in, in the communities, all of them, every medical community, including the medical medium community, and all of them, fats are really a big thing going on. Everybody's on fats, high fat. So when someone says, I tried vegan, I did vegan and still stayed sick, it's because they were high fat vegan. High fat vegan. That's the difference. And when someone's paleo and they're like, I did paleo and I did this amazing paleo diet and I'm still sick and I don't get it. I'm still sick because it was probably a high fat paleo diet. There's a difference. There's a difference. I did the keto diet. Well, keto diet is all fat. (laughs) And keto diets are only for people that really aren't sick. They're just maybe got a little weight on them and they don't feel that great and they haven't really got sick. And it's usually for guys, mostly for guys that really gives them a little bit of benefits for short term. They could do the keto diet, but that's all fat. It's like eating all fat. You may as well just grab sticks of butter and just cut it with a knife and be like, okay, just had my breakfast, another stick of butter, cut it with a knife. I just had my lunch, another stick of butter, cut it, cut it with that. Oh, it's grass fed butter. Oh, it's grass fed butter. It's much better. Cut it with a knife. Mm, Just eat a stick of butter. Same thing with the vegans. It's like, you know, two, three avocados, all this, like all this, you know, cheese, that's vegan cheese, all of this. I mean, the amount of fats, it's unbelievable. All this nut cheese, all these nut butters, you know, and and the fats are really high, all the oils, and you got to be careful. You want to recover from any of your chronic illnesses, whatever aisle you're on, side of the aisle, if you're on the left, which is you say you're on the plant-based, whatever you're on the right, which is all the animal-based, whatever it is you're doing, you got to know the truth of what causes your illness, number one. You have to lower the fats. You don't have to get rid of them. You have to lower them. I'm not saying avoid them altogether. You have to just lower them, lower the percentage down. Cut them down once to one time a day. Cut them down to just a handful of nuts twice a day. Cut them down to an avocado a day if you're vegan. If you're vegetarian, cut it down to like one piece of fish a day or every other day. Your, 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 your paleo, cut it down to a piece of grass-fed beef 
you know, once every other day or once a day, depending on how sick you are, whatever it is. It doesn't mean you have to change your, your laws, whatever ideology in food or food belief system or food police system or food, whatever it is that you're doing. I heard someone say recently, they're like, oh, that medical medium, he puts you in the, the food fear. I've, I've never done that. What are you talking about? I, I don't even understand what that means. You mean because I told people not to eat eggs and dairy because it feeds viruses? That was, that was a first. That was like, that's actually unbelievable. And I realized that it came from people that never were really sick enough and never went to 50 functional medicine doctors that actually gave them 1,000 foods to avoid and 1,000 foods to eat with like everything. Oh, you can have nutmeg, but you can't have cumin. You can have this, but you can't have that. And they made people insane and they took away foods that would heal them. You can't have celery. You can't have this, but you can have this. Unbelievable. And they never went through that experience. All I've ever done is just Make sure you lower your fats a little bit. You could still be paleo. I mean, how bad is that? You could still be vegan, 100%. You could still be raw vegan. Just lower your fats. I mean, how simple is that? I don't know anything so more simple than that. And then on top of that, on top of that, bring in some celery juice. Bring in some celery juice. Is that that scary? Bring in some celery juice. In fact, the world's changing right now because celery, you can't even keep it in the stores it's unbelievable what happened. We got that. We got that message out there. Unfortunately, though, a lot of people aren't, you know, are citing the source of that information, so they can't get the other information they need to heal completely. So they mix it with doing tons of whey protein powder. Oh, do tons of whey protein powder, but do your but do your celery juice. Like it's unbelievable what's happening and how it's so skewed. I mean, it's really it's actually sad. So I, I'm hoping that either way, I'm just glad people are doing their celery juice. But the bottom line is. You got to bring down your fats. You got to lower your animal products to, to just a little bit. Get rid of pork, maybe, because it's so high in fat. Do your grass fed beef. Don't do it twice a day. Do it once a day. I mean, I'm just, uh, look, if you're vegan, don't do two, three avocados a day. Don't do a big guacamole. Do like a little guacamole. Get more fruits and vegetables in of all kinds. Get more berries in. Get more, you know, get more um, potatoes in. If you're raw and you don't want potatoes because you're a raw foodist, which is totally awesome. I freaking love raw foods. Love it, love it, love it. I love plant-based, plant-based raw food. I love it, raw food diets. Absolutely. I've been supporting those for years, for decades. And you don't want to do anything cooked. Make sure you get, you get a lot of leafy greens, a lot of leafy greens, and a little bit more fruit and leafy greens. If you're a vegan that likes cooked and raw, you're like all cooked, you do the winter squash, you do the potatoes, you do some leafy greens, you do your celery juice, you bring in more of other things, do your heavy metal detox smoothie. Everybody should be doing the heavy metal detox smoothie to get better. And then if you're, if you're vegetarian, get rid of the eggs and dairy because it's going to feed viruses. Keep your fish if you want. So keep your fish as a vegetarian. Vegetarians usually eat fish. Keep your fish. Get rid of the dairy. You're, you're, you know, bring in some avocado, but don't overdo it. Just like the vegans, don't overdo it. Keep your fats low. Bring in more leafy greens. Bring in a little bit more fruit. If you're on the paleo side or the animal protein side, the same thing. Lower your animal products a little bit. Don't do too many avocados. Don't do tons of nuts and seeds. Bring them down a bit. Bring in more leafy greens. Bring in a little bit more fruit. Don't be afraid of it because that's your antioxidants. That's what keeps you from dying, believe it or not. And that's your vitamin C, which keeps you from dying. You got to remember... Without vitamin C, you actually die. Just for the record, you can't live without vitamin C. You, you can live without B vitamins. Did you know that? Certain B vitamins. You can live without vitamin A. Did you know that? You can live without certain minerals. Did you know that? You can live and live and live. You die when you don't have any vitamin C and you're not getting vitamin C. That you can't live without. It's unbelievable how the anti-fruit movement is out there. I've, it's almost like, you know, you just, you close your eyes for a second, you open them up and you're like, no, we're still here in this madness. It hasn't changed. It's like, pinch me. Is that really happening? Are people really shunning fruit to the degree they are? You bring in more fruit and leafy greens. And you bring in that celery juice every single day, you guys, every single day you bring that celery juice in and you bring that heavy metal detox smoothie in. Okay. You want to know what that heavy metal detox smoothie is? Look up, look up thyroid healing. Get it. Go to the library and get it. Just you know, go to Amazon. Get it. Whatever it takes, and learn about it. Learn what you need to do so you're not taking Corella or doing something else and thinking you're getting metals out when you're not. It's ridiculous out there. 
So listen, you guys, I mean, this is, this is, and the thing is when you do all these things, you start healing. These are simple foundational pieces of it. I haven't even gone into supplements you can use when you're really sick. That I have in the books. I could also do another show on that. Of course I can do a show with supplements and everything. And I'll do the, I'll do the Facebook lives and I'll do everything. And I'll help you guys with supplementation too and answering questions. But I got to tell you something. These are the simplistic basics I just gave you right here. And if you're doing that and you're learning more information of why you're sick, that I've been giving you in all the other radio shows, go back to the other radio shows and giving you information of why you're sick and what's in the books. And then you can start getting your confidence back and start exercising again because you're healing and moving forward. And you start, next thing you know, you're running five miles again. I know people running 10 miles again, 10 miles, and they couldn't even move out of their bed. They're running 10 miles. They're pumping 20 pound weights, even though I don't recommend that. They're doing 10 miles. They're rebounding for one hour. They're on their spinning bikes. They're doing yoga. They're doing an hour of Tai Chi. They got their lives back. You can do it too. I promise you, you can. You take one day at a time. You can do it, okay? You can. You can. I love you guys. I stand behind you 100%. Keep the faith. Keep the love. Keep the compassion. I'm with you, and I believe in you, and I always work for you guys. Never forget how much I love you. Okay, bye now. Bye-bye.